I'm on government assistance and I run out of money and I had to buy Pampers for Jelani. And I had $11.42 in the bank. And I remember wrapping my son in a towel for two days. I remember the second day, like you said, I had my, my hand on Jelani's stomach and I said, don't worry, baby. Mommy will never be this broke or broken again. And that day, what shifted for me was I was willing, and I don't know if this is gonna sound crazy, I was willing to completely die to any form of me that I had been so that I can birth the woman that I was becoming. The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. And you hear it all the time when people say, I've always been this way. Okay, well, if that's working for you, keep doing that. I knew it wasn't working for me any longer. I had hit my version of rock bottom. So I was willing to let go of everything and everybody. See, another reason why people won't get there is because the doorway is for you to fit through. You trying to carry everybody else through because you trying to be rescue 911. And you got to rescue you first. I am much more valuable to my family and to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself, teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get them. I'm much more valuable to them now. But I had to go through a window time of 10 years of judgment. You leaving us, hanging out with white people all the time. You going to these crazy countries. We, we don't know what you, I, I had to be willing to, to allow my conviction to make me inconvenienced. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. But most of us aren't like that. Facebook is example, we want to be liked. Well, I woke up and I like myself today, so your like is extra. My, my job is to like me first. I was willing to say every day, Lisa, you like you? Lisa, are you proud of you? Lisa, are you playing full out? Every day before I checked in with anybody else. I was willing to inconvenience my entire life. My entire life. I was willing to disrupt my entire life to buy my future, to buy my possibility, to give my dream a chance. See, we're not supposed to tuck our dreams in on the, on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home and go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. My, the human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, what's our command for tomorrow what do you want to create it's not keeping score your brain is keeping score because your brain is designed to keep you safe your soul your intuition your human spirit is designed to make you soar when you get to the edge your brain will always tell you to step back it's always going to tell you to step back because you can fall, always. It's gonna tell you to step back. Because before you fail, the last time you did this, you saw someone else fail, you could hurt, you could be off work. It's gonna tell you, it's designed to keep you safe. So you have to be willing to play between your brain and your soul. And on some days, you gotta just listen to your soul. And you gotta say, I'm gonna leap, I'm gonna get to the edge. Most people are at the edge, and you're standing at the edge, and you're watching everyone else fly. That's pit my ride, watch my crib, all this stuff. You know, watching people's lives on Facebook. You're at the edge, watching someone else live, wondering what it's gonna be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Because only three things can happen. You're either gonna jump and fly, or you're gonna jump and fall on something soft. Are you gonna fall down hard? Either way, you're gonna get back up. You already know you got what it takes to get back up. You're not, your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly. That you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are. 
before they really get your fingerprint, before they really feel your breath, before they really get your contribution, before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. All I'm doing is giving my, my dream a chance. And I'm not extraordinary. You don't get off the hook. You don't get to be let off the hook. I'm an ordinary woman who chooses every day to make one more extraordinary decision. Everything that I need to get back up, I have in me. If I don't have what I need, I can go get it. Once I figured that out, the world was my like playground. Like just, the question was just, where do I go get it? Where do I, oh, I don't know about that. Where do I go get it? Right. And um, and I don't come from a learning background where I was a great student. I wasn't, you know, my highest grade in school was a C plus. And when I got a C plus, I did the happy dance. <laughs> and um, and so I didn't have a background where studying was natural for me. But when I realized that if I go study something and I learn it, I own it, it's mine now, right. man, it was crazy because all through school I struggled. I, the last time I took an English class, my English teacher told me I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire life. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. And the same year I took a speech class and my speech teacher, he said, quote unquote, Miss Nichols, I recommend you never speak in public, that you get a desk job. And so I... That's mean. Yeah, it just, it's just, you know, it was, it was demotivated people, um, sad people, hurt people hurt, sad people make other people sad. Hurt. Bottom line, don't take it personal, hurt people hurt. Mm -hmm. See, most people want the convenience of transformation without the inconvenience of required, yes. required yeah. for transformation. So my grandmother says, and I love to repeat this, your conviction what you're passionate about, your conviction, and your convenience don't live on the same block. <laughs> they ain't even in the same zip code. So if you want to have a conviction for something, you have to sign up, sign up to be inconvenienced. We're trying to find convictions and passion and breakthrough on the inside of our box. Well, when you realize that the box doesn't even exist, like someone made up, oh, you're playing outside the box. So we all bought into, there's a box. Well, I don't live in, I don't even own a box. I don't even, I don't even want to get in your box. <laughs> like, mm -mm, you better come out here because I ain't getting in there. And so when you start thinking like that, Tom, all of a sudden, everything is possible. So I, you know, pe I disrupt people when I say, you want to make me extraordinary because it lets you off the hook. What if the God that we call God, the divine, whatever your faith is, what if there's no partial? It's not going to give me a hookup and not give you one. It's not going to give me an opportunity and not give you one. I'm just going to go after it. If I die, I'm going to die on a treadmill, like Wilson said. I'm going to be on the treadmill running. You know, I'm, not, I'm just not going to stop because I believe all things are available to us. I'm just willing to go after them. Are you willing? And then that is so disruptive because then you got to make a decision. Because it's easier to live inside the parameters of, well, as a black woman, well, as born and raised in South Central, well, I'm academically, I'm dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. I wrote seven books. I'm dyslexic. So just knowing, like, I'm not perfect. What I do really well is I manage my imperfection well. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you. And it's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. Any story. Like the fact, the beauty of me being one of the top 1% earners in America is that I was on government's assistance. Right. Like that's the beauty. Like, come on, it wouldn't be a big deal if my family was rich <laughs> or whatever. Like, it, I'm supposed to do something. The beauty is that when you show the little engine that could story, like I'm not gonna run fast, but I ain't gonna stop running. I might slow down and have to breathe and catch my breath, but I'm not stopping. Because I believe all things are available to all of us and good people should do well. Because when good people do well, good people just do more good in the world. I'm that same girl who ran track for Dorsey High School, who struggled to get through high school, who got kicked out of college because I couldn't afford to stay. That was on government's, I'm that same girl. I'm that same girl, I don't forget her. I'm also that same woman who runs a multi-million dollar business. I'm also the same woman who has seven bestsellers. I own both of those. I own all of it. I don't shrink to my greatness and I don't live in my saga and my sorrow. If you can own your brilliance while owning your, your imperfections, if you can own your giant while owning your smallness, if you can live in duality, constant duality, the freedom will be earth-shaking if you can live in that. See, either you don't want to be as great as you really are, 
and you're trying to dim your light so that others won't feel insecure about themselves in your presence. And so you keep playing at 79 watts when you know you're supposed to shine at 159 watts. And you keep checking the temperature of the room to see what the room can handle versus just giving the room you and letting them, if, the, if your light's too bright, then let them put on some shades. Can you give yourself permission to live in the duality of your imperfections and your smallness and what you're learning and what you still have to learn and your greatness and your brilliance and your light? Can you allow them to coexist and then serve them up to the world? To love you, to see you, to inhale you, to judge you, to leave you, to love you. You're just, some of us are just as afraid of being loved as we are to be left. If you go where you've never gone, do what you've never done and say what you've never said, you'll become the woman and the man you've always known yourself to be.